Hey, welcome to another video by Photo Video Crafter. Receiving my Ronin S already in August of last year, I immediately unboxed and tested it. A button that I quickly fell in love with was the trigger button that, if you press it twice, resenders the gimbal. Well, I fell in love with the promise that it would recenter the gimbal. In fact, my Ronin S did not recenter after pressing the trigger twice at all. The pan axis ended up in a position that deviated noticeably from the center. In other words, it showed a clear joint angle drift. No matter how often I tried to recenter the gimbal, it always ended up with that drift. Since the photokino was approaching and no projects were planned in the meantime that it would have required a gimbal, I waited for the photokino to open doors in order to directly ask the people from DJI how to fix this problem. Surprisingly, they didn't know it either, but wanted to be helpful by preparing a repair request for me. So I sent it in and got it back two or three weeks later. To my big surprise, the Ronin S was not repaired at all, but they had added a note telling me the gimbal functions as it should, which is why no repair was necessary. Somewhat upset, I called DJI's technical support. However, while DJI's customer service is usually quite helpful, before even listening to me, those guys said that I would be the only guy in Europe experiencing this problem and alleged that I hadn't balanced the gimbal correctly. After explaining to them that this was not the case, they wanted me to send them a photo. The best way to show the joint angle drift is a bird's eye view. However, the camera would have covered the pan motor and arm, which might make it more difficult to see the joint angle drift. So I had to press the trigger twice and take a photo without a camera mounted to the gimbal. While all gimbal manufacturers warn of not running a gimbal without a camera mounted to it, DJI only provides a value for the maximum payload of the Ronin S, but none for the minimum payload. This theoretically means that you can run it even without a camera mounted to it. Nevertheless, I carefully tried to balance and run the Ronin S with decreasing weights and finally realized that one can in fact balance and run it with zero weight. But please don't try it. I don't want to be responsible for damaged gimbals. Only after doing as described, I took that photo without a camera mounted to the gimbal to uncover pan axis and arm and sent the photo to DJI's technical support. The people there denied that balancing and running the Ronin S without a camera mounted to it is possible and alleged that doing so I had damaged the gimbal and that this was the reason for the joint angle drift. I made it very clear to them that this was not the case. And since I knew that from other gimbals, I tried to convince them that there must be a way to adjust that joint angle drift via the app by overriding the gimbal's own calibration and saving it. They categorically denied that this is possible and explained to me that the three motors adjust their position by repeated impulses and don't know their absolute position, which was the reason why you cannot override and save any position values. Furthermore, they said a certain joint angle drift would be within the tolerance and that I would just have to live with that. As you can imagine, I was not satisfied at all with this response. A joint angle drift of almost 10 degrees might not look that much, but on the set, where, depending on the scene, you quite often have to react quickly, recentering has to work properly as you just don't have the time to recenter with the joystick. To cut a long story short, after some weeks of back and forth with DJI's technical support, they finally asked their development division in China. A few days later, I got the information I needed to fix this problem. If you are currently experiencing the same issue with the Ronin S or might do so in the future, this video will help you to avoid the same unpleasant experience and save you a lot of time by providing you with a quick fix. The following sequence is just to demonstrate that the Ronin S shows that joint angle drift despite being perfectly balanced. To accelerate this demo, the video is played faster. The power of the gimbal is switched off. First, I'm tilting the gimbal with the camera backward and it stays in that position. Then it's tilted forward and stays in that position as well. In other words, the tilt axis is correctly balanced. Afterwards, gimbal and camera are rolled clockwise and stay in that position. Then they are rolled counterclockwise and stay in that position too, which demonstrates that the roll axis is also correctly balanced. 
Finally, the gimbal with the camera mounted is leaned to the left and it's not turning around the pan axis. Then it's leaned to the right and it's not turning around either. This means that also the pan axis is correctly balanced. Now I'm turning on the gimbal and as you can see, it immediately takes its non-centered position on startup. But before we look closer at this joint angle drift, I want to provide you with another proof that the gimbal is correctly balanced and simultaneously show you how you can do this by yourself. The Ronin app lets you double check whether the gimbal is correctly balanced. To do so, you activate Bluetooth and launch the Ronin app on your smartphone and connect it to the gimbal. Then you press the configuration icon and then the setting icon. If the general settings page pops up, switch to more by pressing the word more at the top of the page so that it turns blue. This takes you to a page where you see three boxes. Press the middle one, which says balance test. As soon as you press it, the gimbal starts moving and conducts a self-test to check whether it's correctly balanced. This takes some time. At the end of the test, a white window pops up to give you feedback. In the case demonstrated here, it confirms that the gimbal is perfectly balanced. Now that I have shown you two methods to prove that the Ronin S is perfectly balanced, let's have a look at the joint angle drift. For better orientation, I have drawn a circle on a sheet of paper and subdivided it in 30 degree segments. The gimbal is put in a circle so that the pan axis lies exactly in the center of the circle. Now I turn on the gimbal and it immediately takes its non-centered position on startup. The joint angle drift is almost 10 degrees to the left. While the camera which records this video is installed exactly on top of the pan axis of the gimbal, the camera mounted to the gimbal does not end up lying in the same position when correctly balanced. This creates a viewing angle under which the gimbal seems to show a joint angle drift of more than 10 degrees, more like 15 degrees. But in fact, it is close to 10 degrees and a joint angle drift of this magnitude is unacceptable. Because in most situations you don't have the time to recenter the gimbal with the joystick because it's way too slow and inaccurate. The joint angle drift does not only occur on startup of the gimbal. As you can see here, I'm moving the gimbal in different positions and then press the trigger button twice to recenter it, but it always ends up in the same uncentered position, i.e., with the joint angle drift of some 10 degrees to the left on the pan axis. In other words, the joint angle drift is replicable. Now, how can you fix this joint angle drift? What's the trick? This is done with the Ronin app, but it's hidden so well that you wouldn't accidentally find it even if you actively search for it. And quite obviously, it's hidden so well that not even DJI's technical support knew it. But it's very easy if you know it. First, you turn on your gimbal and press the trigger button twice. Then you activate Bluetooth and launch the Ronin app on the, your smartphone and connect it to the gimbal. On the main page of the app, you press the configuration icon. And on the page that pops up, you press the Moto parameter icon. That takes you to a page where you see some numbers in the bottom half. Press on more to collapse it, which brings up even more numbers. If any joint angle's value is higher than 1 or lower than minus 1 or any axis arm of the gimbal drifts after the gimbal has been recentered by pressing the trigger button twice, then joint angle calibration is needed. In my case here, the drift of the pan axis arm is pretty obvious and that's confirmed by the app which shows a pan axis angle drift of around minus 10. Whether a gimbal and app can really measure the absolute value of decreased drift or whether it coincidentally just shows the same value that I have measured, I don't know. Now you push and pull the joystick until the respective axis is centered or the joint angle value in the app is close to zero. In my case, it is the joint angle value for the pan axis. And here comes the trick you've been waiting for. You press joint angle for about six seconds. When you let go, a pop-up window appears which says offset calibration. Press OK and you get a confirmation at the bottom of the page which says offset calibration succeed. This was it. Your gimbal will now recenter correctly. And as you can see here, no matter in what position you move the gimbal via joystick, when pressing the trigger button twice, it always falls back in its correctly recentered position. I'd be glad if this video helped you saving some time solving your joint angle drift problem and sparing you trouble with DJI's technical support. 
If so, I would very much appreciate your support by liking the video, and if you want to get more useful fixes, hacks, tests, reviews, and tutorials, then just hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell as well, otherwise you'll miss out on my next video. Oh, yeah.